As the golden hues of sunset painted the sky, an elderly and wise grandfather sat beside his eldest grandson on the porch, the air filled with a tranquil stillness. Yet, beneath the calm, the grandfather knew he had an important lesson to impart. He turned to the young man, meeting his gaze with a look of quiet resolve, and began to speak with a gentle yet deliberate tone. My son, he said, life is full of people, and not all of them can be trusted. While it's true that we shouldn't judge others hastily and should strive to help those in need, there are individuals who, if you extend your hand to them, may use it to harm you. He paused, allowing the weight of his words to settle before continuing. This doesn't mean you should harden your heart against those seeking help, but it's crucial to discern the intentions of those you choose to trust. The grandson, intrigued, leaned in closer. What do you mean, grandfather? He asked. The older man smiled knowingly, as though about to reveal a cherished truth. Let me share with you a story, the grandfather began, his voice steady and warm. It's a simple tale about a toad and a scorpion, but it carries a profound lesson about trust. Settling deeper into his chair, he began the tale. One day, a toad sat by the riverbank, enjoying the calm waters, when a scorpion approached. Dear toad, the scorpion pleaded, will you carry me across the river? I cannot swim. The toad, naturally cautious, replied, but you are a scorpion. If I carry you on my back, you might sting me, and I would die. With a soft and convincing tone, the scorpion assured him, Why would I do that? If I sting you while we're crossing, we would both drown. It wouldn't make any sense. After considering the logic, the toad decided to trust the scorpion. Allowing him to climb onto his back, the toad began swimming across. But halfway through the river, the scorpion stung him. Shocked and paralyzed by the venom, the toad gasped. Why, now we'll both perish. The scorpion, looking regretful, replied, I couldn't help it. It's simply my nature. The grandfather paused, giving the grandson time to absorb the story. Then, with a solemn expression, he continued, Do you understand now? There are people whose very nature compels them to harm others, even when it makes no sense to do so. It's not about what you did or didn't do. It's just who they are. He leaned back, his voice growing softer, but no less firm. That's why you must be cautious about who you trust. Helping others is a noble act, but wisdom lies in discerning who truly deserves it. Always seek guidance from God before extending your hand. The grandson nodded slowly, the wisdom sinking in. He knew his grandfather wasn't asking him to shut others out, but to approach life with discernment and faith. This heartfelt exchange stretched late into the evening, with the grandfather sharing twelve types of people one should be wary of helping. And as they spoke, a subtle truth echoed in the young man's heart. Life's greatest wisdom often comes from the heavens above. The first type. The manipulator. Let me tell you about someone you must watch out for in life. The manipulator. This is the type of person who only shows up when they need something from you. They'll charm you, shower you with attention, and spin stories that pull at your heartstrings, all to gain your trust. But beneath their facade lies a selfish agenda. Their interest in you isn't genuine. It's all about what you can provide for them. They'll drain your energy, push you into uncomfortable situations, and twist events to make it seem like you're the one at fault if their expectations aren't met. And when the tables turn, when you're the one who needs help, they vanish without a trace, leaving you to deal with everything alone. Helping such a person will only bring you exhaustion, disappointment, and unnecessary stress. If someone's presence in your life is purely transactional, it's time to take a step back. The best way to deal with a manipulator? Keep your distance. It's not cruel. It's self-preservation. The second type. The ungrateful. My son in gratitude can cut deeply. Imagine putting your heart and soul into helping someone, only for them to act like your effort was nothing. The ungrateful person sees your help as an obligation, not a kindness. 
They won't acknowledge your sacrifices or thank you for your efforts. To them, what you do is expected, not appreciated. Yet, when they need something again, they'll come back without hesitation, as if nothing ever happened. Continuously giving to such a person leads to frustration and heartbreak. They take, take, and take, without a thought of giving back. It's important to understand that relationships should be built on mutual respect and gratitude. Those who fail to value what you do today are unlikely to stand by you tomorrow. So, my advice is simple. Identify the ungrateful and reserve your energy for those who truly appreciate you. The third type, the eternal victim. Now, let's talk about the person who constantly plays the victim. These individuals are always caught in a whirlwind of drama and excuses. To them, life is a series of unfortunate events, none of which are their fault. At first, you may feel sympathy for them. Their struggles seem endless and you want to help. But be cautious. What they truly seek is for someone else to solve their problems. And here's the trap. The more you assist, the more they lean on you, becoming entirely dependent. No matter how much you give, it will never be enough. Helping them is like pouring water into a bucket riddled with holes. It all drains away, leaving you depleted. Sometimes, the most loving thing you can do is say no. A person who refuses to take responsibility for their life won't grow if others keep solving their problems for them. Save your energy for those willing to meet you halfway. The fourth type. The lazy laziness, my son, is like a creeping vine that stifles growth and ambition. A lazy person has no desire to put in the effort necessary to improve their circumstances. They treat life as if it's a leisurely ride, finding endless excuses to avoid action. But here's the real problem. Such a person will want you to take on their responsibilities. From the smallest chores to life-changing decisions, they expect you to carry their load. Laziness thrives on inaction, and by constantly helping them, you only feed their complacency. Think about it. How can you help someone who refuses to stand on their own feet? Lending a hand to someone unwilling to help themselves is like pouring water into a dry desert. It will never bear fruit. Instead, the best support you can offer is encouragement toward effort and discipline. Teach them that real progress comes from hard work, not shortcuts. Sometimes the kindest thing to do is let someone struggle and learn the value of perseverance. Growth is only meaningful when earned through one's own sweat and determination. The fifth type, the opportunist. Now let's talk about those who only show up when they're in trouble. My son, you may have encountered such people, the ones who vanish during the good times, but suddenly reappear when a crisis hits. To them, you're a problem solver, a last resort to clean up their messes. Friendship and loyalty take a back seat to their immediate needs. But here's the truth. Relationships built solely on convenience are not true relationships. A genuine friend is there through thick and thin, sharing in your joys and supporting you in hardships. Someone who only seeks you out in their darkest moments is not offering a balanced connection. They drain your kindness without giving anything back. Invest your time in relationships that are present at all stages of life. You deserve people who celebrate your triumphs as much as they lean on you in struggles. Life is too short to be a savior for someone who wouldn't do the same for you. The Sixth Type The Guilt Tripper Have you ever encountered someone who makes you feel bad for not helping them? This person is an expert in emotional manipulation. They wield guilt like a weapon, twisting your feelings to make you believe you're selfish or uncaring for setting boundaries. These guilt trippers are skilled at making you feel as though it's your duty to sacrifice your well-being for their sake. They play on your emotions, making you feel small for putting yourself first. But remember, their goal isn't to genuinely connect, it's to control you. Helping someone shouldn't come at the cost of your peace of mind or self-worth. Recognize when someone is using guilt to manipulate you and don't be afraid to say no. Protecting your energy and setting limits isn't selfish, it's necessary. True support comes from mutual respect, not coercion. It's as if you are solely responsible for solving all their problems even at the expense of your own peace and well-being. My son, don't fall into this trap.
True help should come from a place of willingness, not pressure. Always remember, prioritizing your own well-being is not selfish. It's essential. If someone constantly manipulates you into feeling guilty for not meeting their endless expectations, they are not deserving of your assistance. Life is about give and take. Surround yourself with individuals who honor your boundaries and who, in turn, will never make you feel like their happiness depends on your sacrifices. Love and genuine friendship should feel like a blessing, not a burden. Learn to say no when it's needed because real relationships don't drain your spirit. Value your emotional and mental health above all else. Those who truly care for you will respect when you need to step back and take care of yourself. And always remember, my son, the right people in your life will uplift you, not weigh you down with guilt. The seventh type, the one who ignores advice. Listen closely, my boy. There are people who seek help not to grow or change, but simply to be heard. They don't genuinely want advice, they want a sounding board for their complaints. When it's time to act on the guidance you offer, they choose their own way, even when it's the wrong path. You could spend hours giving your wisdom, showing them the right steps to take, only to see them repeat the same mistakes over and over. It's like an endless cycle. Helping someone who dismisses your advice can leave you feeling unappreciated and emotionally drained. Sometimes the most valuable lesson someone can learn comes from their own experiences, even the painful ones. Timing is critical. Save your energy for those who are genuinely ready to grow and value your counsel. A real friendship or partnership thrives on mutual learning and respect. So, my son, focus on sharing your wisdom with those willing to listen. Those who refuse to change aren't yet ready for what you have to offer. Your words are precious. Give them to those who truly seek transformation. The eighth type, the opportunist. Ah, my grandson, beware of the person who only sticks around for personal gain. This type doesn't see you for who you are but for what you can provide. Money, connections, status, or something else of value. You'll notice they vanish when you're in need, but they'll always be the first to show up when they want something. It's a one-sided relationship where you give and they take. Behind their charm and smiles often lies a heart that values your resources more than your presence. True friendships are built on mutual respect and genuine care, not hidden agendas. If you let opportunistic people into your life, you'll eventually feel used and unappreciated. Instead, Seek relationships where love and support flow naturally, without expectations of repayment. Remember, son, you are worth more than what you can offer to others. Choose those who cherish you for your character, not your possessions or influence. Life is too short to carry the weight of selfish people. Focus on those who value you and not what they can gain from you. The ninth type. The one who refuses to learn life, my boy, is an endless teacher but some people simply refuse to take its lessons to heart. These individuals face the same challenges repeatedly, yet continue making the same mistakes. They resist change and put little effort into improving themselves. You might invest time and energy offering guidance, trying to steer them in the right direction, but it feels like trying to fill a bucket with a hole at the bottom. No matter how much you try, your efforts go unnoticed. It's a hard truth. But some people need to stumble and face their failures on their own to realize the importance of growth. Instead of pouring your energy into those who refuse to change, dedicate yourself to those eager to learn and evolve. Life becomes richer when you witness someone striving to grow and succeed through your guidance. Prioritize relationships with those who value the opportunity to improve. Your energy is too valuable to waste on someone who isn't willing to move forward. Choose wisely who deserves your help. Son, remember this well. Not everyone is ready to acknowledge their mistakes and seek growth. It's crucial to reserve your energy for those who genuinely strive to overcome their struggles. Don't be swayed by those who cling to comfort rather than change. True help must come from both sides, a conscious effort by the giver and the receiver. 
You deserve to walk alongside individuals who respect your efforts and share your desire for progress. The tenth type, the deceptive helper. Lies, my child, have a way of corroding trust and relationships. When someone lies to gain your support, they're exploiting your goodwill. These individuals weave tales, twist truths, and exaggerate their hardships to elicit your sympathy. At first, you may feel compelled to act, but eventually you'll uncover the truth, that their story was nothing but a manipulation. The realization can sting, leaving you feeling betrayed and foolish. Trust, son, is the cornerstone of any meaningful relationship. Those who betray it do not deserve your help. Instead, focus your care on those who are transparent and honest, no matter how challenging their situation. Sincerity fosters bonds worth nurturing, while lies lead only to frustration. Helping someone who deceives you is like planting seeds in barren soil. It yields nothing of value. The eleventh type, the prideful silent one. Ah, the proud ones, my dear grandson. They're a unique challenge. These are individuals who refuse to ask for help, even when their struggles are visible. To them, seeking support is a sign of weakness. They suffer in silence but expect you to read their plight without them admitting it. You may extend a hand, offer guidance, or be there for them. But they won't acknowledge your efforts. They see their achievements as solely their own, leaving your contributions unrecognized. Pride, my son, is a barrier you cannot break through for someone else. The best you can do is remain available and patient, but don't exhaust yourself trying to force assistance. Help must be accepted with humility and gratitude. Without it, true growth is impossible. The twelfth type, the opportunist. Beware of the opportunist, my boy. This person lurks in the shadows, waiting to exploit moments of your vulnerability. They'll pose as a friend or ally, but their intentions are far from genuine. The opportunist has no boundaries. They'll seize any chance to benefit from your kindness, leaving you feeling used and betrayed. Your generosity becomes their weapon, and your trust becomes their gain. Helping someone like this is dangerous. It's like handing a thief the key to your house. Instead of offering aid, you're giving them the means to take advantage of you. Protect yourself, my grandson. Be cautious and value the relationships that are built on sincerity, not self-interest. The thirteenth type, the narcissist. Ah, the narcissist. A truly difficult individual to deal with. This is someone consumed by their own ego, convinced that the world revolves around them. Every conversation, every interaction, is a stage for them to showcase their grandeur. If you share a problem, they'll overshadow it with their own greater story. Helping such a person feels like pouring water into a broken jar. No matter how much you give, it's never enough. For the narcissist, friendships are one-sided. They bask in your praise and attention, but vanish when it's your turn to be heard. Their lack of empathy is exhausting, leaving you drained and unvalued. So, my boy, recognize when someone is too self-centered to value your presence. True relationships are mutual, with room for both individuals to thrive. You deserve to surround yourself with people who appreciate your worth and respect your contributions. A final thought. These are the types of people to be cautious of, my son. Choose wisely who you allow into your life. If you've encountered someone like this, share your story below. And if you've made it to the end, type trust is earned in the comments. Don't forget to share this video with someone who might need it. And if you want to dive deeper, click the video on screen. See you on the other side. See you on the...